My name is Ben with Building Code Tips, and I want to jump into contractor bidding a little bit. I know as a homeowner, it can be stressful going out and trying to find people to price out work for you, um, do some type of project you're looking to get done, um, or maybe help them with a project you're working on. Maybe they're only going to do specific parts of a project you're working on, and you need to find someone to do it. And you want to know, how, like anybody, you want someone that's reliable, right? That they're going to show up on time, that their work is, is good quality work, and they're going to stand by it if they make a mistake. Well, as you're out there doing that, I want to give you some information and um, just kind of some tips um, as you start to weave your way through bidding and calling out contractors. Um, first, there's, there's two kind of main types of contractors out there, right? There is the kind of the, the small crew, maybe it's one, two, three, four guys, and usually the owner is the one that meets you there. They give you the price and they are helping to do the work right? They are a part of it, right? They have lower overhead, but they're, and they're there. They're a part of it. Then there's the second one, which is kind of the, um, you know, the big, huge company, right? Where, you know, they have an office, they have higher overhead and they have a bunch of crews that go out and do the work. You know, I kind of think of like, um, the difference between like a, maybe a framer who the guy actually frames and he's got three or four guys with him versus maybe like an HVAC company where they've got like, 10 different trucks with crews and they just go out during the day and they do different houses and they come back. Right. Um, but what's the difference, right? What, what, what do you need to think about when you're deciding who to use and who to kind of chase for your pricing? Well, the small crew guy, he's the lower overhead. His pricing's probably a little cheaper, right? He's going to be there. So if you have questions, if you're someone that's kind of like wants to ask a bunch of questions, you might have some changes. He's there, right? He can, he can make those changes a little more on the fly, but depending on who you get, if they're not vetted enough, they can be a little bit more untrusting, right? And you don't have, you don't have the, the, the backing to go make sure it gets done right. And so, you know, if they do poor work, if they do, you know, they don't show up on time, there's just, there's nowhere to go, right? Cause that is the owner. So if you're willing to wait, you know, you know, they do good work. You can trust them. They're a smaller crew, um, you know, or your budget just does not allow to kind of go with a bigger size company. Then look for those smaller one, two man crews and, and use them. Just know that, you know, they could, if they're super busy, you may not show up on time, right? Um, you might have to stay on them for quality. Say, Hey, look, like I'm not going to accept this. You're going to have to fix it, you know? Um, versus if you hop over to kind of the bigger, you know, the, the second kind of type of contractor, um, where they've got more crews, well, it can be harder to get a hold of the owner or it can be harder to get a hold of the guy who did the bidding for you. You, you know, you say, Hey, I don't like the way this is done. And the crew says, well, I don't know. I'm just here putting it in. This is what my boss told me to do. Right. So then you got to go through a few more hoops, but if something ever happens, you know, they're a bigger company, they have backing, their warranty probably stands. Smaller company, they probably don't have much for a warranty. So once you pay them and they walk away, anything that happens, you're probably going to have to find somebody to come fix it. You know, if you put in a bunch of tile and it all cracks at the grout lines, well, either you're going to have to fix it probably, or you have to find someone else to do it. Um, versus if you hired big company to do it. Maybe you got a one year warranty and you just call them up and they come out and re grout your lines. Now that's just an example. So when you're out there kind of weaving through all of that, just think about, is this a big company or is, or is this a little guy? How, you know, do I need to pay attention to it a little bit more? Um, the smaller companies, especially, right. They might ask you for some money down. Maybe they can't, um, they can't float the bill for the materials or whatever. So this would be probably one of my biggest tips is don't ever pay anybody until you've actually gotten something. Okay. So if somebody comes to you and says, Hey, you know, we're going to need, you know, $2,000 down. Um, so we can order your materials say, well, have the materials delivered and I'll hand you a check or where are you getting your materials from? Cause I'll call down there and I'll pay them direct and make sure that they're getting delivered to my house. This is especially true with the smaller companies, right? Because, you, you don't know, right? They may be the nicest person in the world, 
but I've been around and seen just kind of horror stories where people have given up bunches of money and the people just kind of walk on them. They don't ever return their calls. They just kind of pretty much just took their money and ran, right? And there's no recourse. You know, you may have like a little contract that's signed, and you, but then you have to spend months going after L&Is and bonds that they may have or this or that to try to recoup some of those funds. So my, my, my biggest tip of advice is just don't pay anybody until you get something. If they want something for materials, sure. Say, hey, have my materials delivered. I'll cut you a check. You can walk down and pay your supplier or I'll pay them direct and have them delivered here. You know, you work for a week. I can pay you weekly if you need to be paid weekly, you know, and you're here, we can figure out like uh, progress payments and pay them weekly. Do it that way. Um, but just don't ever put yourself in a situation where you've paid a bunch of money and you're just hoping that somebody will take care of it for you because not all contractors are that honest. And unfortunately, you got to just pay attention. Um, the other big thing about contractors and bidding is always get three bids. The reason you get three bids is because is sometimes, at least where, where I'm at right now, building is crazy. And so you might call up a plumber and say, hey, I need help plumbing my basement. And he's so busy that he doesn't really want to do it. But he's like, well, if they'll pay me this much, then, you know, I'll show up and do it. And they'll give you a huge, crazy number to do it. Right. But then you go down the road and you find another guy who maybe doesn't have a lot of work and he's willing to bid it at what it should be priced at. So if you only get one bid, then how do you know if it's comparable? So if you get three bids, then usually you can find apples to apples. Like, is this guy missing something? Is, did this guy add something he didn't need to do? Maybe you were going to do some work yourself and the bids aren't necessarily apples to apples. And you can start to see like, are they all three kind of in the same range? If they are, then they're all probably pretty honest and you can just pick the one you feel the most comfortable with, right? Um, just that's something to think about, right? Three bids. Always get three bids. Don't pay anybody, okay? I just had this house that I went and did an inspection at. Um, the lady wanted me to come out there because the homeowner um, had put a whole bunch of money down and had this contractor come out. They did all kinds of work and they just, the workmanship was terrible. The roof was leaking. Um, the tile was not flat. They hadn't grouted everything. They had torn the walls open and they kind of went through COVID and put everything on hold and they just told them, well, we're not coming back. Well, they'd already paid them. So now she's got to figure out a way to, to fix her house. It's been in shambles, right? So in a nutshell, hopefully this will keep you moving down the right road. Um, get three bids. Uh, don't overpay somebody. Know what you're getting. If you go with a big company or a small company, how much you might have to pay attention and be kind of a part of it and uh, ask about the warranty. You know, even if it's a small contractor, hey, do you warranty your work? Can I call you in a year if it doesn't, if something fails? right? Ask those questions. Sometimes people can be very um, trusting and, and they just come across as trusting, but you don't know what's going on in their life. And so just make sure that you're taking care of yourself and taking care of your investment and that uh, you end up with a great project when you're done. Mm -hmm.